Microchips run everything, and the best microchips are made by TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. TSMC chips have put Western tech companies and militaries streets ahead of China, and China is not happy about it. TSMC is so important, the world could go to war over it. I'm Matt Bevan, and this is If You Listen. TSMC's story starts in 1958 in where else but Dallas, Texas. Twenty-seven-year-old Morris Chang was at work, a microchip factory belonging to Texas Instruments. It's a company that made AM radios and calculators and gear for the US oil industry, hence Texas. And Morris had a problem. See, the factory was supposed to make microchips to go in their products, and it wasn't. See, microchips are incredibly difficult to make. The process of manufacturing a microchip is so complex and intricate, it's hard to believe it was ever developed. At the factory Morris was working in, almost none of the chips they were making were working correctly. Morris Chang was a Harvard-educated engineer. He fled from China as a teen. He had worked hard to get where he was, and now it was time to prove himself. He started fiddling with the factory's settings for how they made microchips. Turned down the temperature here, increased the pressure there, combining these chemicals with those ones. Within weeks, the factory's yield was up to 20%, and then 30%. His bosses noticed how successful he'd been and started promoting him. Texas Instruments paid for him to get his PhD. They gave him bigger and bigger responsibilities. He was apparently a pretty tough boss. He had a short temper, and getting screamed at by him became a bit of a rite of passage at Texas Instruments. He was also famous for the fact he was almost constantly smoking a pipe. On top of electrical engineering, he's one of the world's best players of the card game Bridge. Morris is just one of those guys who seems to be really good at anything he puts his mind to. Ten years later, Texas Instruments was doing so well, they were looking to set up more factories in other countries. So Morris Chang and a colleague went on a tour of Asia. His colleague's name was Mark Shepard. The son of a Dallas cop, he looks like an AI-generated, generic Texas businessman. They made a stop in the Taiwanese capital. Taipei, the capital, is a modern city with many Western habits, including the miniskirt and a fear and hatred of communism. Neither Morris nor Mark had ever been to Taiwan before. Mark Shepard made that abundantly clear by throwing a tantrum in a Taipei restaurant after he was served a steak with soy sauce instead of barbecue sauce. Didn't they know he was from Texas? Yeehaw! Later, Mark and Morris met with KT Lee. Sorry. Mark and Morris met with KT Lee, a minister from the Taiwanese military dictatorship government, and the meeting didn't go well at all. Minister Lee accused the Texan of being an American imperialist, which, you know, he was, but you don't just, like, say that. They all left in a big huff, but Morris managed to convince both men it was in their best interests to make a deal. For Texas Instruments, Taiwan was a great place to get some cheap workers. And for Taiwan, building microchips for America might provide protection against communist China. The United States tends to try and defend places they trade with. The move now in Taiwan's industry is upmarket into high technology. Foreign investment and foreign technology are welcome. And so the first microchip factory in Taiwan was built. Morris resumed his work back in Texas, and it was here that he gradually developed an idea that would change the course of his life and the future of the world. You see, just like Texas Instruments, all the tech companies around at the time were expending enormous amounts of time and effort figuring out how to run good in-house microchip factories. Morris Chang thought that was silly. Microchips are probably the hardest thing in the world to manufacture. They require unbelievably complicated and expensive machines running in the cleanest environment on Earth. You see, a microchip is a circuit board, like the 
green ones you've seen in pretty much everything electrical, except... The electronic circuits simply cannot be seen by the naked eye. Back here on my shelf, I've got an old 1950s... Hang on. I've got an old 1950s microphone amplifier. If I open it up, you can see it has about 60 transistors, little electronic switches, welded by hand onto a circuit board about the size of a block of chocolate. If you were to make a microchip of the type that's in your phone or laptop in the same way, you'd need a circuit board about the size of an international airport. That's how incredible today's modern chips are. The secret to how special they are is that we can make them very, very small. To make a microchip, you need to use a laser to print billions of transistors and connections onto a thing the size of a thumbnail. The circuits are a series of elaborate patterns etched into the surface of the silicon layer by layer. You see, super hard to make. Morris thought all the tech companies should focus on designing the microchips and outsource the actual manufacture to a company that specialises in it. It's like if everyone in town was trying to learn how to do their own dentistry instead of just outsourcing it to an expert dentist. The results would be quite... <coughs> unpleasant. Morris suggested this to Texas Instruments over and over, but they never budged. Morris rage quit. In the early 80s, years on from their first meeting in Taipei, the Taiwanese economy minister KT Lee gave Morris Chang another call. While Mark Shepard may have put Morris out to pasture, KT Lee saw him as the future. He made Morris an offer. KT Lee was offering him a blank cheque to build a company that would make Taiwan the microchip capital of the world. Make Taiwan the dentist. The place that all the tech companies go to get their chips made. The Taiwanese government put in half the money. They bullied wealthy Taiwanese businessmen to chip in too. The plan wasn't to design a perfect microchip. They were going to design the perfect microchip factory. TSMC pioneered the dedicated semiconductor foundry business model. The Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company was born with Morris Chang at its head. 40 years on from when it was founded, TSMC is making the smallest chips in the world and the labs they're made in are incredibly high-tech. Earlier this year, the ABC's East Asia correspondent Bill Bertels struggled a bit with all the protocols for getting into a Taiwanese microchip lab. So you sort of step into it, like a onesie. It's quite a process just getting into one of these labs. <laughs> he put on a hat, gloves, special shoes and got into an airlock where jets of air blew off any particles that may have got stuck on his clothing. The worry wasn't that he would catch something from inside and bring it out. The worry was he would bring something in. It looks more like a hospital than a factory because a single speck of dust can ruin a chip. They are in fact cleaner than a surgical theatre. Even the machines are specially made so that they don't shed particles. Having dust specks in a microchip factory is like having rhinos running around in a car factory. These transistors and connections are barely wider than atoms. And in the chip world, smaller means not only that they take up less space, but also it makes them more energy efficient and more powerful. And TSMC can make these tiny chips more quickly than anyone else. It's the most valuable company in Asia, and last year it was the eighth most valuable company in the world. It's responsible for 5% of Taiwan's GDP and 7% of its electricity consumption. TSMC pumps out close to 60% of the semiconductor chips used around the world and makes 90% of the most advanced ones. It's kind of an extraordinary situation. You've got a resource that's needed for basically everything in the modern world, all coming from one place. Making it the most valuable and indispensable chip company in the world. 
TSMC is so essential to the global economy that Taiwanese media calls it the sacred mountain protecting the island from invasion by communist China. But is it actually protecting them? Or is it a giant target? Let me tell you a little story. Centuries ago, a cluster of 11 small islands in Indonesia was the world's only source of the spice nutmeg. Nutmeg could be used not only for flavour, but to preserve meat, and Europeans thought that it could also cure diseases. It was worth more than its weight in gold. That was fine for a while, but eventually, the Dutch decided that instead of buying it from Silk Road traders, they would invade the islands, kill almost everyone there, and take the nutmeg for themselves. Now, imagine you were relying on the Silk Road traders. What happens if your precious nutmeg falls into the wrong hands? Taiwan? They've got the nutmeg. And China wants it. And tension is increasing between mainland China and Taiwan. Beijing has conducted massive military exercises close to the island, raising fears that Chinese President Xi Jinping will fulfill his promise to take control of Taiwan, either with an invasion or with a blockade. To try and get around that, the US, Germany and Japan have convinced TSMC to start construction on factories in their countries to ensure the supply of chips to the US and its allies. Just last year, Donald Trump's former national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, appeared at an event for the Council on Foreign Relations. I think that the TSMC situation is a little provocative for China right now uh, and doesn't provide security. In fact, it, it, it counterintuitively uh, lessens the security of Taiwan. He's saying that China does not like that Taiwan has such a precious resource and that it's provoking China to attack. O'Brien then said that Winston Churchill decided to sink the French fleet rather than allow the Germans to capture it during World War II. So if China invaded Taiwan, he suggested that the US should follow Churchill's example to stop Xi Jinping taking control of the TSMC factories. Can we allow the, you know, the, the equivalent of the Germans taking the French fleet? Uh, Churchill didn't allow that. Could we allow that? Robert O'Brien's statement made headlines in Taiwan. He tried to clarify it, saying that he didn't think that the US should promise to blow up TSMC if China tried to invade, but clearly some in America are afraid. The ramifications of letting China take over that company could be massive. They would control one of the world's most valuable resources. America's fear is that they could stop selling us the chips if they liked, or sell them at such high prices that it makes non-Chinese companies unprofitable. After all, it's happened before. That's what the Dutch did with the nutmeg once they seized those islands. In 2022, the world's most successful investor, 92-year-old Warren Buffett, bought more than $4 billion in TSMC shares. And then in 2023, he sold them all at a loss. He said he didn't like the company's location. He said the risk of confrontation with China was too great. Morris Chang is not afraid of a Chinese invasion. He is now also 92. He retired as CEO of the company he built in 2018, but still appears at public events. He can't smoke his pipe anymore, but he still plays bridge, something else he has in common with Warren Buffett. The two men talk a lot about how much the game has in common with business. But as for TSMC, it remains to be seen which of the two has made the right bid. G'day, Matt here. Uh, just here to let you know that if you want to listen to or watch more episodes of If You're Listening, you can do that right now on the ABC Listen app. There's a lot of them, and there's a few right here on YouTube as well, and you can also watch them on ABC iView. Okay, just one second. Oh, okay.